In this video, we're gonna to start to move some of our disk-based operations over from our bootloader where we have them implemented in assembly into our C code where we'll do them in a mix of C and assembly. Before we start on this, I'm just gonna organize this a little bit to place my standard IO-based uh, code inside of a folder. So it makes it a bit easier for us to see everything. So I'm just gonna place my print and my standard IO files into this STDIO here. And when I do this, I just need to make sure that all my references are updated. So in print.io, I just want to make sure that this is, you know, up one directory to standard int. And then similarly inside of here, there's probably something that needs to be updated. So let's go up one directory to standard. Oh, sorry, no, that one's fine, actually. This one's fine as well. It's this one here that has to go up to standard int.h. And when we do this, we'll also update our make file just to update this to point to the right pass now. So again, I'll just go ahead and uh, wrap my text and we'll just make sure that we have these all correct. So when we take a look at these, we wanna take a look at the source directories. They're at kernel slash main.asm is fine. This one is now an stdio slash print.asm. Uh, this one over here is fine. This one here is now at stdio slash stdio.c. So that should all be fine now. So with that, we'll create a new folder called disk up here. And this will contain all of our disk-based operations. Now, before I start writing the disk code, let's just make this and uh, make sure that everything is working successfully. So I'll just clear this. I'll do a quick make. And I'll see here that I do have one error and it's inside of my main. I just forgot to update my uh, my imports here. So this one's standard IO. It should be in standard IO slash standard IO dot H. I think that should fix everything. There we go. So now everything's building successfully. So we can go on to discussing our disk code. So our disk code is going to be divided into a few pieces. So the few pieces are going to be, we're going to have this disk or ASM disk, I'll call it, dot ASM. And I'll have a header file associated with it, which will be ASM disk dot H. What I'm going to do for this video is I'm just going to define the disk reset operation, which is a way of being able to reset our disk just in case we need to do that kind of operation. We actually saw this sort of idea when we were taking a look inside of our bootloader. When we tried to read off of our disk, there were certain instances where we we're going to reset our disk. So if we just look for interrupt 13s, we have our retry here, and this calls a disk reset operation. And inside of here, what we did was we called this disk reset through this interrupt 13H. Basically, we would move on the disk that we wanted to reset. We would move zero into AH, and then we would try to reset the disk, and we would get a result based out of that. And that's what we're gonna be implementing here. So the way that this is gonna work is we're going to create a basically setup for this. So I'm gonna to go to standard int.h. I'll import that so that I have my typing in. I'm gonna create a C decal function, which I'm gonna call x86 disk reset. And it's gonna take in two different things. It's gonna take in a uint8 underscore t, which is the drive number that we wanna reset. And then I'm also going to pass in a pointer. And this pointer is actually just going to be used to return back the error if there is any error from our operation. Now, I could also just return something from assembly, but I, I find that it's often a bit easier to just work with these pointers. It makes things a little bit easier just to work between the function. And I want to add like more returns. It's easier to do so with those actual pointers instead. So with that implemented, we can go over to our disk.asm. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our bits to be set to 16 bits, of course. And the section will be text, and the class is going to be code, like we've been doing for all of ours. And we're implementing this global x86 disk reset. Really, the main reason why we're doing this is because it's going to make it a bit easier for us to generalize a lot of the code that we're working with. So if you're ready to do a disk reset, rather than hard coding it in, we can do it with parameters, which makes it easier for us to reset like different disks if we have any others on our system. As with every function, we're going to push our BP onto the stack, and then we're going to move the stack pointer into the base pointer. We're then going to move into AH0. This is the code that indicates that we want to do a disk reset. We need to retrieve the disk number off of the stack and place it into DL. We can do that by referencing BP plus four. BP plus four is going to be the location of our first parameter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an STC. So this is going to set up our carry flag. Remember that the carry flag is going to be set in the case where there is an error in this operation. So the way that we do this is we say int 13H, 
This will try to reset the disk. If there's an error, we can jump to something which we'll call reset error. If there's no error, then we could simply move into CX the value zero. And then I'm just gonna load the address that I want to place the error status in, which said BP plus six. Remember it's an eight bit number or an eight byte number, right? U int eight underscore T. So that's why it's at plus six, right? This one's at plus four, this one's at plus six, just because of the typings of those values. So as we'll load the address of the error pointer into BX, and then to move our error code into it, we just move into BX, the value CX. And that's the end. And then I'll just jump to something called end reset. So instead of reset error, what we're going to do is we're going to similarly set up that return code or that um, that address for the, uh, the pointer of the error code. So we move BP plus six into BX. I'm not gonna move into CX the value one. One is indicating that there is an error in this. So we had zero here to indicate there was no error. The one here indicates that there was an error. So this is us setting the error status to say that there was an error inside of our code. And we'll move that into the error uh, status. Finally on end reset, so at the very end of our code, we're gonna move the BP into SP. We're gonna pop BP and we're gonna return. So this is a nice simple function. Let's go ahead and give it a test from our main file. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to include into this disk slash ASM or disk ASM dot uh, H rather like this. Now to actually test this, what we're going to do is we'll get rid of these prints here. I'm going to add this uint underscore, sorry, uint eight underscore T error. And I'm going to call my x86 disk reset. I'm going to call it with a disk number of zero and I'll give it a pointer to the error that I defined. Then I'm just going to print out the error that was given. We should see a zero if there was no error, and we should see a one if there was an error. So in this case, since I've given a valid disk number, I shouldn't see any sort of error when we actually run this. So last thing here that we need to do is just get our make file updated to add in our new files. So we have a new ASM file that we need to add in. So that ASM file is gonna follow the exact same structure as our previous one. We have ASM flags, and then we have we're gonna place this in builder slash kernel slash, uh, we'll place it in ASM slash, we'll call it disk.obj. And it's gonna come from source dir slash kernel slash disk slash, uh, this one is called asm disk.asm, right? So that's our ASM file. Uh, there's no C file associated with this. So we just need to add in that ASM rule that I've added in here. And then we of course need to link this into our linker. And the way that we do that is we just add it into this uh, list of files here. So we're gonna have a new one and it's uh, builder slash kernel slash asm slash disk.obj. There we go. So that's what we are looking for. So if everything has gone correctly, we should have some working code. Let's give this a try and see what happens. So it looks like we have an error here related to the linker. So what I'm going to do is I need to take a look at this function here. When I come over here into asm desk.asm, I'll just take a look at these function names. It looks like these are just not matching each other, right? So these two have to match each other, otherwise it isn't exported properly. So that's what the problem was. When I do my make now, everything seems to work correctly and I can run my code. And as you can see, the disk reset does work. The error is set to zero. Just to verify this, if I go into main and I change this to a disk that doesn't exist, like say 10, we should see it fail. And that is exactly what happens. You see that we get an error one. This indicates that this did not succeed, which in turn means that our disk read, our disk reset does look to be working successfully. It does actually reset the disk and it does actually set the error code if an error does occur. So with this, we now have a working disk reset function. And we're going to be able to continue on this trend and start to implement some of our other functions related to disks, such as our disk reads and these types of functions as well. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.